Well, folks, now it's going to get really crazy right now as the Jets quarterback situation continues to remain muddled. And now we have, of course, the breaking news today that Derek Carr has signed a four-year, $150 million contract with the New Orleans Saints. He didn't want to wait, obviously. And this is what's driving me crazy about this entire thing. Because you knew that something like this was possibly going to happen, and now it has. You can cut this in many different ways. You really could. You could look at this as glass half full, glass half empty. You could look at it from the standpoint that, hey, the Jets are still in the mix for Aaron Rodgers, for those who are all in on the Aaron Rodgers bandwagon. But for those who look at the Rodgers situation, look at the fact that this guy still hasn't decided what to do. And the Jets, who had Derek Carr in town a couple weeks ago, Sat down with him again last week in Indianapolis. You hear all the stories that the Jets got along with Derek Carr, that there was a something of a mutual interest there between the two parties. A lot of people speculating on different forms of media that perhaps the Jets should just try to make a deal happen with Derek Carr. Why wait for Aaron Rodgers to make to make up his mind and still to, to date, to right now, he still has not made up his mind. We still don't know whether he's going to retire or play again or try to force a trade. The thought is that Rodgers is now going to either play for someone or retire. But the Jets didn't want, just wanted to wait. They didn't want to go right ahead and make the move for Derek Carr. They didn't want to give themselves an opportunity to get a quarterback who, let's be honest, I know Derek Carr is no Aaron Rodgers. I totally understand that. But it would have given them at least some stability at the position. A quarterback who is in his early 30s, going to be 32 years old this season. A player who is a top 15 player at the quarterback position. Yes, you could talk about his his record in cold weather games. I totally understand that. But still, one of the top passers in this game. A guy who, from everything that had been reported previously, seemed like he was going to be a good fit. The Jets praised him. Robert Sala praising him back and forth. Joe Douglas praising him. It looked like it was possibly going to happen, but no, it didn't happen at all. Because, again, can you blame him? Why do you want to sit there if you're Derek Carr and wait and wait and wait? Free agency is about to open up in a few days, maybe okay, a week even. Get it done. Get it over with. The Saints made Derek Carr their number one priority when the offseason started. Of course, he's very familiar with Dennis Allen, so it made sense for him to just go right ahead, get the contract that he wanted and the deal he wanted from the Saints who, oh, by the way, were in salary cap hell. Didn't matter for them. They wanted to go out there and get the player they felt they needed to get to, to settle their quarterback situation. As for the Jets, it just remains unsettled. It really does. Because you're, again, sitting here wondering, what is Aaron Rodgers going to do? Even the Packers are wondering what he's going to do. Everyone is wondering what he's going to do. And the Jets find themselves really, even though as, as basically the only other team other than Green Bay being held hostage in this situation. I'm now seeing here, and this is now being reported by this from Paul Andrew Esden Jr. He, of course, uh, writes for the heavy uh, and also does a show on the score up in Syracuse. He says here, interesting gossip from the NFL Combine that Woody Johnson really is the one who wants Aaron Rodgers so much that the staff had to support, had to be supportive of that, but really the rest of the team's front office secretly wanted Derek Carr, who signed with the Saints. This is what really bugs me, folks, about this whole thing. This is what drives me crazy over this whole thing, is that this is a Woody Johnson production. He wants the brass ring as far as the celebratory quarterback is concerned, the surefire first ballot Hall of Famer, who, of course, will never wear a Jets cap or jersey in the Hall of Fame for that matter. We all know that's never going to happen. That's what he wants. And it seems like he has forgotten, even a lot of Jet fans have forgotten, what happened 15 years ago when this franchise was in the same exact position when they went out there and got Brett Favre. And look, I like Aaron Rodgers. He's a great player, one of my favorite players to watch, no doubt about it. He's one of the best quarterbacks in professional football ever. 
But that said, at 39 years old, coming off of a year where he had statistically the worst year of his career, also had a hand injury. A lot of questions over the last couple of years. Will he retire? Will he not retire? Will he play? Will he not play? And then going back and forth, have has have the Green Bay Packers and Aaron, Aaron Rodgers on this roller coaster for two plus years now. And if you are Woody Johnson, you want to get on that bandwagon. You are the Jets. You want to get on that bag bandwagon and that train. Let that happen. I mean, it, it's insane. A couple ind- independent reports saying that the Packers are hoping that Rodgers doesn't want to come back to Green Bay. Per Rich Eisen, they're hoping his decision is to retire or be traded elsewhere. Eisen was told multiple times in Indianapolis. So that's where we are. What's going to happen next? I, I, I'm just, I cannot believe that the Jets want to tie themselves and that the front office wants to tie themselves to a quarterback who can't make up his mind of what he really wants to do. He spent four days, did Rodgers, in isolated retreat. He came out of that isolated retreat. We saw reports that saying that maybe something will happen. Maybe he'll make a decision. Maybe the Packers and he will work something out. We saw the reports that maybe the Packers want to have him back. Now the reports are they want him gone and they want to trade him. And still no no answer, no word from Rodgers one way or the other of what he is going to do. And who knows how much longer he is going to drag this out. Keep in mind, I saw another resto- a report earlier from Jeremy Fowler, ESPN, saying that one of the major sticking points for Rodgers is the $59 million that he has owed in 2023 is apparently, quote-unquote, a roadblock on getting him over here on, a, on any kind of trade proposal. So, do the Jets really want to tie their, tie their wagons to this? And what happens if Rodgers decides, I'm going to retire? Then what do the Jets do? Because there are a lot of rumors, Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo possibly going to the Las Vegas Raiders. So if that happens, you lose another quarterback there. He's going to be a free agent, hit free agency officially in a week. And if you lose Garoppolo, then what's next? Lamar Jackson. I know a lot of people want to jump on Lamar Jackson. Could the Jets go out there and make a deal for him, considering he's going to have a huge price tag that's going to require at least two first-round picks going back to Baltimore? I can't see Joe Douglas making that move. I'll be quite honest with you. So if if Garoppolo's out, Lamar Jackson's out, then what? Andy Dalton? Baker Mayfield? Carson Wentz, who just got released by the Washington Commanders? Jameis Winston, who's likely going to get released come June by the uh, New Orleans Saints? What's next? Try to get Mike White back here, who's a free agent and likely is going to uh, get a contract elsewhere? Or do the Jets run it back with Zach? Is that what this is all about? That has to be your concern. If you are a Jet fan right now, at this moment, wondering what is going to happen next, if Rodgers does retire or decides, hey, I don't want to go to the Jets, send me elsewhere, make it happen, the Jets are in big trouble. And even if he does come here, and I know a lot of Jet fans are going to get excited, we're all going to get excited if Rodgers comes here, and it's going to be like, you know, this big superstar coming play play for the New York Jets, Guy's a Hall of Famer, as I just said. And probably the first couple of games, like in September, he'll, you know, throw for 300 yards, 400 yards in a game here. You know, see him light up the scoreboard another week. Maybe he'll beat the Patriots. Maybe he'll beat the Bills. And we'll say, oh, my God, this is going to turn around. Look what we did here. We brought in Aaron Rodgers. But when you bring in Aaron Rodgers, it isn't just about winning games in the regular season. It's about getting to and winning a Super Bowl. And is this Jets team ready to win a Super Bowl right now. Yes, they have a lot of really good young players. A lot of good young players. Brees Hall, Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson. They have the offensive and defensive rookies of the year this past year. But are they really ready to challenge Buffalo and Cincinnati and Kansas City atop the AFC right now? My mind, even if they do bring in Aaron Rodgers, the answer right now would be no. Still got offensive line problems. You still got to figure out what you're going to do with Quinnen and Quincy Williams. You still got to figure out what you're going to do with to to strengthen this defensive line and offensive line on both sides of the ball. So I don't know. If, I can't sit here and tell you that a 39 year old Aaron Rodgers, who has been weighing retirement or non-retirement over the last couple of years, means the Jets are automatically a Super Bowl team. I just don't see that. And if he does come here. It is basically Super Bowl or bust. 
which means we're in the exact, we would be in the exact same situation just about as the Jets were back in 2008 when they brought in Brett Favre. And look, when Brett Favre came here, it was exciting, man. It really was. You know, coming off of a year in 20, 2007 where Chad Pennington was injured and when he played was ineffective. You bring in, uh, bring in Brett Favre, who was an MVP player of the year before, took the Packers back to the NFC Championship game, and you're thinking to yourself, man, we get Brett Favre and you're one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play. And for 11 weeks, it was working great. Jets were 8-3, and three, beat the Patriots on the road, beat the Titans who were undefeated at the time on the road. What could be the possibilities for this team? And, of course, Favre has the shoulder injury, and everything turns right downhill. The Jets finish 9-7 and out of the playoffs. Mangini gets fired. Tannenbaum, of course, sticks around, and the Jets bring in Rex Ryan. And I know that team would go on to, to the AFC Championship game in the next two years after that. But the fact is, there are repercussions when you bring in that type of player, and you do not go the distance with it. So if the Jets bring in Aaron Rodgers, and they don't go to a Super Bowl or they don't go to an AFC Championship game. What happens to Robert Sala and Joe Douglas? Do they go out, the, do, do, does Woody Johnson push them out, out the door and try to hit the reset button all over again? I think, for me, that's what I would have to be concerned about if I am a Jets fan. Uh, that's the thing that I think a lot of Jet fans have to be concerned about because right now, you could have gone with Derek Carr. The Jets could have gone with Derek Carr, who could have given them five, six years of some stability at the position. Whether the Jets had won a Super Bowl or not, I don't know. And I don't know if they're going to win a Super Bowl or not, even if they get Aaron Rodgers in here. But at the very least, it would have given them some stability. They could have built around Derek Carr over the next several years. And they still would have been able to continue what they've been doing with this young nucleus. nucleus. Now, if they end up getting Aaron Rodgers... It's we got to win, and we got to win right now. It's no longer, the all of becomes no longer about just getting to the playoffs if you bring in Aaron Rodgers into the fold. So Jet fans, get nervous because either the Jets get Rodgers and the pressure is now on to win the championship right away, or if they don't get Rodgers and it's now trying to run through the scraps of trying to find somebody to be the starting quarterback and <laughs> Lord knows, possibly compete with Zach Wilson for the starting job in 2023. Leave your thoughts and comments below. We'll talk to you next time.